In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today, as you noticed, we pray in a joyful tune. That's why, you know, like uh, all the hymns are different a little bit today. We have the commemoration of the three major feasts, the Annunciation, the Nativity, and the Resurrection. And although we, we have this commemoration, the church still kept the reading that was originally for this Sunday that was planned. And it is the famous uh, repentance story of the sinful woman who was forgiven. And repentance means admitting your sins. Repentance is like one of the church seven sacraments, repentance and confession. And uh, because of the importance of this subject, the church is reminding us about it at the beginning of the Coptic year. We are now in the month of Tut, the first month of the Coptic year. And as we begin a new beginning, each time there are new beginnings in our life, it's a reminder about the most important thing that God cares about, which is the purity of our heart, which is making peace with the Lord and living in his fear. And uh, again, repentance comes before confession. Repentance, as I said, is admitting your sins, fighting to stop committing them. And uh, it's like walking, you know, in one direction when you have us away from God and then making a U-turn. And making a U-turn and going back. But in order for you to repent, you have to admit first that you have a problem. St. John, in his uh, first epistle, he said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not, not in us. Nobody among us doesn't make any sins. The only perfect one who doesn't sin is God. But every one of us, we are guilty of sinning. But if we confess our sin, as St. John said, he is faithful and just and forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you come to him, he has his door always and his arms always open for you. And uh, as I said, repentance is a change of direction. It's like uh, when you are driving and you make a U-turn. You are following certain habits, certain way, in your life and then you came up to yourself and you want to change your way and you make a U-turn in your relationship with God to be different. Uh, in one of his uh, books, St. Ephraim, Ephraim the Syrian, one of the church fathers, he had a book called For She Loved Much. This book was about the story of today's gospel of the sinful woman for she loved much. He said in this book, the woman talking about her was an adulteress who defiled innocent ones without shame. People who lived in the area said that she corrupted the whole town. Well, if you pay attention to the gospel, Simon, who was one of the Pharisees, he made a big azuma, a big... Uh, you know, uh, like a, a meal and invited the Lord and many people. And as I was sitting on the table, here is the woman coming behind his back and, you know, touching him, kissing his feet and anointing them with her tears and with a fragrant oil. And of course, for such a woman, with this, you know, like a reputation, as St. Ephraim said, for such a woman to come inside the Pharisee's house with, of course, many of the other leaders in the 
clergy, the Jewish clergy, and for her to come in this, you know, like a, a meeting or in this crowd, of course she was not welcome. Of course, you know, he got mad and surprised for him, for her even to come inside his house. However, she took the initiative and she took on herself that she has to see the Lord, that she has, you know, to make a difference in her life. And she began, you know, like uh, to feel that this life that she is living is no good. These habits are no good for her. And uh, she began to change her outward appearance. Repentance starts with changing of habits. If you want to really make a U-turn in your relationship with God to stay away from evil, one of the important things, all those habits that takes us away from God, we have to change. So of course, just, she started to, to, to wear different clothes, to, you know, to uh, her tears, you know, washed her eyes who were full of makeup, all, all of these things that she was not using in a good way and so on. And she came to that point that she is, you know, her sins in the end made her feel guilty and greatly ashamed. Exactly like you see this picture of the prodigal son. When he came to his father, you know, he said, I'm a, in front of heaven, I have seen in front of heaven, I'm not worthy to be called your son. And he didn't even continue the sentence, make me as one of your hired servants. He had the guilt, you know, and this artist who painted this uh, icon, he painted it well. His face was down and uh, he was feeling not yeah, any proud of what he did. He needed this 180 and you turn yeah, any, uh, in his relationship with God. A similar story was told by Saint Ephraim the Syrian, the one who wrote this book. Uh, I told you about it's called For She Loved Much. So Saint Ephraim the Syrian, the story tell that uh, he was in a city called Edessa. And he was, you know, working there. At that time, homes did not have bathrooms. So there was public showers, public bathrooms that people would go there. And he was working there. And he noticed that, you know, there was one woman who was very similar to the one in our gospel today. She did not have a good reputation. She kept noticing him. She kept following him. She kept, you know, trying to reach and talk to him. And at a certain point, she asked him, well, I want to commit the sin with you. I'm really, yani, in, yani, want that from you. So this, the saint had his mind somewhere else. He told her, of course, yani, I, no problem. But he didn't care about her body, her appearance. He cared about what? Her soul. So he said, I agree, but let's have, let's do this in the public, in front of everyone. So, like we see here what he said, he said, you know, she was surprised and said, aren't you ashamed that we do that in front of everybody? So he answered her and in a way he was teaching her. He said, if you see it here, it said, if we are ashamed before men, how much more should we be ashamed before God and fear him? If you feel, Yani, that it's not appropriate that we do that in front of everybody, how can we accept to do that in front of God who sees everybody, who knows all the secrets of man, know that he will judge the whole world and render unto each according to what he has done. God, if you, nobody sees you or sees us, he is watching. He sees everything that we do and we will be judged one day for what we are doing. And uh, surprisingly, the woman, when she heard those words, her heart was moved. 
was moved in repentance. She felt that it's a message directed for her. And she fell down at the feet of the saint, Saint Ephraim, and she told him, O servant of God, guide me to the path of salvation that I may be delivered from my many evil deeds. And it was a true repentance. The saint, you know, was so happy for her response. And uh, he took her, he took her to a convent where she started to live her life with the rest of the mothers and sisters and she started to live a pure life. And this was a soul that God saved and with the prayer and with uh, Saint Ephraim, she, he got her back to God. That's why this was an example and today's woman in the gospel is another example that tell us that sin binds and blinds every person. It binds you, it makes you trapped, it makes you under the slavery of sin and Satan, and it blinds our eyes. We cannot see well. We cannot see God who is loving us, and we fall in the traps of Satan who want to enslave us. But repentance frees the person from being a slave to sin. You are free to make decisions. You are not driven by something or a bad habit. And we have many examples in the church history about those models of repentance who their life changed. For example, Saint Augustine, whom the church called the son of tears. His mother, Monica, was praying for him years and years. He was living an evil life and he came back after years with the, her prayers. Saint Moses the Black, who was, you know, a killer, who was a, a thief, who was a, a leader of a gang, he was doing all kinds of evil things, but God touched his heart and he became one of the church fathers and a great monk. Those transformations happened to many of those. And uh, examples also are Saul of Tarsus, you know Saul of Tarsus? Who knows who Saul of Tarsus? Saul is who, who became later on St. Paul. Saul of Tarsus, he was a Pharisee, and he thought the way to serve God is to persecute the Christians. But God, as you see in this picture, appeared to him and he changed his heart and he became the great apostle St. Paul and a great example of a change of heart from the persecuted, the rough, the angry uh, heart to a heart full of love for the Lord. And the last example is St. Mary of Egypt, Bardo, a very famous saint. She's even famous in the other Orthodox Church more than she's famous in our church, although she is Egyptian. And those examples of repentance, of a repentant saints, are no longer embarrassed or ashamed of their, you know, of themselves. They always remember the word of St. Paul when he said in 2 Corinthians, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm new now. I have a new life with the Lord. God renewed me. God made me as if, you know, I'm newly born from after the tears of baptism, cleanse me, of repentance, cleanse me and changed my life. And uh, God always accepts all those who come to him. But how about this woman in today's gospel? Like Saint Ephraim, he said, she corrupted the whole city. Does God still accept her? Yes, of course. You know, he didn't reject her. He didn't, you know, push her away in front of people. He was always welcoming her, welcoming her love, her tears, her perfume that she bought was you know, a, a large amount of money. And he is always knocking on every door, lest we hear his voice. The book of Revelation tells us in Revelation 3, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him, dine with him, and he with me. What kind of door is that? It's the door of our heart. It is him welcoming him in our life. 
It's welcoming him to purify our heart, to make us really saints, really holy, like he is holy. We are his children, and he wants us to be holy like he is holy. One of the meditation on, uh, on this, uh, today's gospel, it's very nice, like I wanted to share it with you. It says, like as if this woman is talking to God, it says, blessed son, the son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who descended to earth for the sake of man's salvation. Do not close your door in my face, the door of acceptance, the door of a open arms from God. You have called me, and behold, I come. I know that you have not rejected me. So God is always calling us to change our heart, to, you know, to become new, new like uh, 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 in everything that we do. Open for me the door of your mercy, that I may enter, O Lord, and find refuge from the evil one and his hosts. So the door of repentance God always had open for us, but eh, we need his support. He always welcomes us, no matter what we did, no matter what kind of life we had before. And he continued and said, I was a sparrow and the hawk pers pursued me. You know, a sparrow is a little bird and the hawk is resembling here the Satan. And I fled and took refu refuge in your nest. So this is a beautiful meditation like about repentance from this woman. And because of the importance of this story, of, of this model of repentance, the church had it for us in many occasions. For example, in uh, the Agbeya prayer, in the second watch of the midnight Agbeya prayer, the daily book of prayer, we remember her in the gospel. And uh, hatta even the litanies in, of the second watch of midnight prayer, we say, eh, Give me, O Lord, many fountains of tears as you give in the past to the sinful woman. Make me worthy to wash your feet which liberated me from the path of straying and to offer you a precious fragrant oil and gain through repentance a pure life so that I may hear the voice full of joy your faith have saved you. It is really what God did for her. You know, he, he accepted her he and give her liberty and freedom from sin and from evil one. We also remember this uh, story of this model of repentance from this uh, uh, holy woman, blessed woman, in the Agbeya prayer before communion. Before we partake of the Eucharist, before the communion, the church arranged for us that there is a prayer before communion and a prayer after communion. So this prayer before communion, while we are preparing ourselves to take the holy body and blood of the Lord, the church arranged for us to pray and say, as you did not forbid the woman who was a sinner from kissing your feet, please do not prevent me from coming near to you to receive your holy body and your sacred blood. Sacred blood. So again, you see the importance some people will look down at her, but God elevated her. The church elevated her and made her a model for us. So the repentance of this woman today is forever remembered, and we keep remembering it in all our prayers. She offered sincere, heartfelt repentance and turned her life around. And this is what really repents, to turn around, to change your habit. And uh, the gospel didn't mention her name. We don't know what's her name, but no doubt that her name, whatever this name is, is recorded in the book of life in the heavenly Jerusalem. She was a great model of repentance. And lest uh, we take hope from her that God accept everyone no matter what have you been doing. He's always having open arms he always give you freedom from any habits that are overtaking you and always accept us with love. May the blessing of this blessed woman be with us and maybe this remind us and encourage us to repent and confess if we didn't do so for a while and glory be to God forever and ever.